Welcome to Flying Wheels, where last week I was sitting poolside on vacation and after a couple cocktails, I accidentally bought this 2022 Audi e-tron GT. MSRP of $103,000, I paid $81,500 just six months later. I actually test drove this car back in August. Somebody else bought it before I could, which is probably better for me. They then traded in for a new Audi six months later, where I in turn bought it at a dealer auction wholesale from the Audi dealership. Now, I love these guys. I take all my cars to their service department. They're right next to the Porsche dealer, which is really convenient for me. I love shopping cars. This is my 2022 Audi e-tron GT. I am not an electric car guy, although I have traveled across the country in a Porsche Taycan for a TV show. I learned a lot about the infrastructure while on the road, but I know nothing about this car. In this series, we're gonna find out all the good, all the bad about not just this car, but the electric car world, the EV world in general. How is the infrastructure in a small state like New Hampshire? What's it like for you guys everywhere else? I'd love to chat back and forth in the comment sections about all the good and the bad and, and your opinions as well. This is my Audi e-tron GT. I have not driven this car yet. We just picked it up and you're gonna come along with me and find out all the good and all the bad. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. So what's great about me owning a car dealership is I can buy cars wholesale at dealer auctions, which is what I did with this one. I bought this at an online auction. Shout out to ACV Auctions. I love them. I use them to buy and sell. They're great for dealers. This is not a paid advertisement by them. I use them all the time, which is where I bought this Audi e-tron GT. Last August, I test drove this exact car and really, really liked it. And I just couldn't pull the trigger. I had cold feet. I did not need to spend $100,000 on an electric vehicle. And if I was, it could have been a Tesla Model X or a Model S Plaid or something really, really cool. I mean, a Model Model Y is half the price and significantly smarter than this car right here. But I am an Audi aficionado and I love my Porsche Taycan, which is a sister car to this car. Now, it's been well over a year since I've owned an electric vehicle and I live in the small state of New Hampshire where there's only three charging stations that I know about in the entire state. Now, there are Tesla charging stations everywhere, which they've just opened the network to other EVs, but I'm told that it's significantly more expensive to charge at a Tesla station versus like a charge across America station. Another problem I've come into, I don't have a charger at home. I can't charge this thing other than my 110 plug, which takes days upon days. Enough talking, which is pretty much all I do is talk. Let's get into this video where I'm gonna learn how to drive this Audi e-tron GT and find out all the good and all the bad. Now, I think it's running. I'm not quite sure, because it's an electric vehicle, so there's no sound to it. So let's just like, will it go into reverse right now? Yeah, goes into reverse. Okay, so I don't even need to turn the car on. Cameras all around, bird's eye view, 360 degree cameras, which is great. All displayed right here. Now just push it in drive here. It's everything's push button forward, back, reverse, neutral, park. Parking brake is the actual park button. I love the Alcantara suede steering wheel, as well as the Alcantara leather combination seats. Now we don't have the better headliner. This is the premium plus, not the prestige. The prestige is one that I wanted, but that was $123,000. It was a $20,000 upgrade for the prestige now I have it in comfort mode which you'll see right here and fortunately it has 242 miles of range I'm so glad this didn't show up on an empty battery because I have no way of charging this thing yet so we have essentially 242 miles to drive this thing but we live in New Hampshire and we're getting a snowstorm and it's gonna be cold this week so is 242 miles actually 242 miles let's figure out how to reset the trip and start it at zero and we'll find that out along the way well I can't quite figure out how the tripometer works yet but we are at 4,100 miles with 241 miles of range that means at 3,859 miles we should be at zero percent and we're gonna find out as we go I mean hopefully I don't run out beforehand okay let's get out of this we have a whole Whole infotainment display here and this is all just touch it's not push button it's just touch I can turn it up I can turn it down power mute change the stations all right here as well as doing it here by going to my map or going to my radio there's my radio right there let's keep it on the Bob Marley station this is my volume my radio functions my tiptronic shifters which I don't know why I would need in an automatic EV that I think only has two speeds and like go and stop now what's cool about this car is the sound now it has a dynamic sound so it's not just complete completely silent. You can actually like, they have a speaker in the car so you can hear the battery moving or the battery motors moving, I guess, or the electronic motors moving, I guess. So you can hear it and it gets louder as you accelerate. All right, now this is my first time accelerating in this car, so I'm gonna go slow on the on-ramp and we're gonna try this thing out to see if it's quick. Now I showed up in an Audi A8 four liter twin turbo V8 all wheel drive. This is my first experience with an EV. We're gonna do a rolling start at 40 miles an hour and we're just gonna go. Yeah, that's pretty quick. Oh, that is flipping fast. Wow, that was fast. Wow, that was 
weird because it didn't feel fast and it was fast. So like my C8 Corvette does this. Even that twin turbocharged A8L is put my head in the seat fast. This was oddly quick. Like it just smoothly goes. And I guess maybe because it's all wheel drive, it's pulling and pushing and not just pushing me. I don't have an explanation for it. Now I definitely haven't driven two miles yet because the on-ramp is just off the highway and I'm already at 238 miles of range. So I've used roughly three to four miles of range since I started and I've only driven two miles. Well, it's been roughly 15 minutes and I'm on back roads now. Highway driving is obviously going to keep my power, my electricity, my my mileage accurate, but on back roads and heavy stops and acceleration is gonna change everything. That's not what I wanna know right now. I wanna know, how is this thing on back roads? Holy moly, this thing is quick. This car is so, wow, that is highly illegal. Jeez, I apologize, I didn't even know I was going that fast. That was fast. So this might not be a highway car as much as it is a nimble, like back roads, oddly crazy quick car. Oh, that was fun. All right, we got a car out of the way that just left. So long, sucker. Let's see how this thing is on the back roads. Jeez, I'm going Wow, that is wild. How does it handle? Wow. That was fun. And that is what YouTubers call driving in Mexico. I guess it's snowing. I mean, that's what it's like driving in Canada. All right, I haven't really played with the car yet. So let's try vehicle, see what mode we're in. Audi drive select, we're gonna put it in dynamic. We're going to go to, oh, everything changed. I felt that right away. Efficiency, we're gonna go to efficiency assist. What is that? Oh, recuperative and predictive message. Nah. Light and visibility, driver assist. What's driver assist? I know these things don't have self-driving. Maximum. All right, so now we're in Audi drive select, which I think is just the suspension, right? I don't think it's like, whoa. I think it just got faster. I don't know if that's me or not, but that was fast. Whoa! Oh, all right, it, it puts my head back. Yes, it does! Wow, that was fun. Awesome, I didn't think it did that. That just made me so pumped. Okay, I found my first problem. I'm back at my shop, we're here, I'm at work. I've been inside for like 10 minutes and I just realized that I never shut the car off. So I put it in park and then I never actually hit the power button because I'm used to like, all right, turn the key off or push to start, shuts it off. This car, I guess just putting it in park doesn't shut the car off. So let me go here, I'm gonna put it in drive. I'm gonna pull forward. I love the sound of it. Now we're gonna back up. Let's check out our visibility. That looks good. Mirrors look good. I mean, it's just like a regular car. It's nothing fancy. I was expecting like a full bird's eye view. All right, I'm gonna put it in park and then I'm gonna hit stop. All right, that I think shut the car off. The car off? Okay, now the car's off. There we go. Well, since we're back at my shop, let's do the math for where we're at already. Now we've gone 20 miles since we originally left the dealership. We're at 221 miles now. I think we were at 241 or 242 miles. So it's exactly spot on with highway driving and not very aggressive driving on the side roads, minus once or twice. Something else that's really cool about this car, lightning ports here and here in the center. That's pretty neat. I didn't notice drive select before. I'm not sure what that does. I just noticed I never turned the car on. All I did was put my foot on the brake and the entire car just turned on. So I think, yeah, I'm good to go. So I had to shut it off by hitting the stop button, but turning it on, you just put your foot on the brake and you're good to go. All right, take a good look at it now while it's clean. Did I just leave it running again? I think I did. Take a good look at it while it's clean because it was sunny like three hours ago and now the clouds are rolling in for a twister. No, not a twister, a snowstorm. We're gonna have a blizzard, like a couple inches an hour overnight. Tomorrow Tomorrow is going to be a snowy day, and I will say white is not going to be pretty with slush all over it. That's right. I'm going to drive this thing in the snow tomorrow. It is a Quattro. It's all-wheel drive. And we're going to find out how it handles in the snow. The only problem is, yeah, these Pirellis are all seasons. Yeah, these are... Yeah, okay, we're good. Yeah, we have all season tires. We should be okay. We're gonna find out tomorrow. There are gonna be a lot of flashbacks and flash forwards in this video. I left the lights on again. It's been like 20 minutes I came out and found the lights are on. I don't know if that's gonna drain the battery faster. I assume it will, so that's a problem. All right, I promise I'm not gonna make this whole video about the same complaint over and over, but I just went and took photos of that GMC Sierra, of the Audi over there. I came back, I pulled in the parking lot. I left my car running again, so it's the third time. So clearly there is a learning curve. There's one other thing like right off the bat that I've learned that I don't like about this car and I don't wanna make this whole video about things I don't like. The doors are electronic. So yes, there are door handles, but they're not actually like manual handles. Like they don't work manually, they are still electronic. So you pull this and it electronically opens. There is like a fraction of a millisecond delay. So let me see if I can do this on camera, ready? 
Ah, uh, see the delay? Okay, so I can't just pull the handle and open the door, ready? And I'm always in a rush, watch this. See, didn't open, now it's open. And do it again. See, it didn't open, now it's open. So it's like a fraction of a second, but it's still there. And it's happened every time I've tried to open the door. This stereo is unreal, it's like I'm in a concert. Greta Fleet, Greta Van Fleet has never sounded so good before. I have found a flaw with this car that I actually like. I am wicked aggressive driving this car. It is so oddly fun, like I'm driving a go-kart. It's unreal, it's so much fun. But I'm driving like a complete a-hole now, all the time, like from every stop sign. My God, let's see how fast I can go to the speed limit. Okay, so far I am loving this car. I have an issue though, I'm home. I don't have a 220 outlet to charge this car. I have a 110, like an actual extension cord to a regular outlet in the wall. I want to test it and see what it's gonna take. Like, what is it gonna do overnight? The problem is I can't find the charging cord, which is supposed to come with this car. I open the trunk, it's not in there. I can't figure out how to open the trunk. There is no buttons anywhere. Like, there's a button here for the trunk. There's just no buttons anywhere for the trunk, like the front trunk. So I gotta figure that out. So I actually had to YouTube it to figure out where it is. Thank you, YouTube. I just looked it up and it told me. Now, if you look at my keys, like there's no button for the trunk on my key either, which is odd. Why not? There's two trunks. Why not give me access to both trunks. I had the buttons in my C8. It was on my key to the front into the trunk, not on the Tron GT. So I guess the front button is out here. Here's the driver door. There's the front button right there. Let's open it up and see if we have the charging cord. I hope. Good. It is in there. That is the charging setup. And you can see right down there, I have the 110. So we're going to plug that into my 110 outlet, like an extension cord. I'm going to see what we're at tonight. And then tomorrow we're going to see what we got for range off just a 110 outlet, which I don't think is going to be much. Like I think a 110 takes days to charge. So you'll see we're at 4,140 miles right now, and we're at 184 miles, which I think if we go to the car, it will tell us what we're at charging wise. So we'll go charging and efficiency, charging. We're at, it says 78%. I don't think that's right though. That's not 78%. So let's charge, okay? Charging not in progress. Please activate to start a timer. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just plug it in and see what happens. So you'll see I have it plugged into the extension cord here. Here's my CCS charger. Hopefully it reaches. Plug it in there. Let's see, so that's plugged in. Here we have our, keep on the garage because we're getting some snow tonight. All right, home, do I need to hit a power button? Nothing's happening right now. Like usually this would be lit up green if it was charging. Let's see here. All right, I don't know what I'm doing. I guess I should read the owner's manual tonight. Please activate a timer. I don't want to activate a timer. I just want it to charge. Efficiency assistant. Here's my son, he just found out my car. You found out. Surprise. This thing is so cool. It is very cool if I could figure out how to charge it. All right, so we're plugged in, but nothing's happening. All right, so we have a white light. Now we have no light, so nothing is happening. Maybe I'm on the wrong side, because there should be two charging sides. Yeah, there's one here too. Maybe I'm on the wrong side for a 110. This thing sounds insane. It does, it sounds like a spaceship. Is this a hybrid or all electric? This is a 100% electric car. And since I have to turn it around to charge it, we might as well go for a test drive. Pull this back to put it in D. All the way? Yep. We're in drive. Ready? This down because there's a light. Ready? Let's make sure we're in sport mode. Are your Crocs in sport mode? Yep. We're gonna go here. We're gonna go to dynamic, which Our is buttons. sport mode. Smart car. Ready? Yep. Set. Count to one. Start at zero. Count down. Three, two, one, go. Oh my god. What the heck? spaceship. Crazy, right? A literal spaceship. It is crazy fast. That's exactly the word I use, spaceship. Good news, I'm on the opposite side. I don't know, it's showing me. I think that means it's charging. So we're at 176 miles of range right now and the battery, oh, charging system malfunction. Shoot, I don't know what that means. And now it's red. Very complicated car. Yeah, okay, malfunction. I don't know why. I think we're gonna have to do some research tonight. I haven't read into this at all. Welcome to the next morning where we got 10 inches of snow last night. So I parked this e-tron last night in the, in, not in the snow. I plugged it in and here we go, 10 inches of snow later and it's thick, heavy, heavy snow. Now, 
I'm a little concerned. We're talking electricity to a car that's all wet right now. Apparently it's all safe. It's completely safe, but it doesn't seem safe to me. I also did learn a little bit more last night reading up on this car because I did no research before purchasing it. Apparently when I plug this car into charge, I'm supposed to push the button first. So let's see if it changes. I'm gonna pull this out, push the button, and then plug it in. Nothing. Whatever. I'm overcharging it for now. Over like I'm done charging it for now. I'm actually curious to see if this thing will pull out of the snow without any hesitation. It pulled out easier than any other all-wheel drive car I've ever owned. All right, one weird thing now, it's been now Monday three. This car, I'm used to starting a car, like hearing it run. It's just so weird to push start and you're going. That's it, it's odd. So there is a learning curve that's just strange. One of the cool things about this car is like with my naturally aspirated or my turbo supercharged, whatever V8 engines, I have to let them warm up before I get on them. With an electric car, just no warm up. We just go crazy fast. What do you think? Wasn't expecting it, right? Wild. One thing that's odd that's kind of confusing me about this car is the adaptive cruise control. Now I have an S6 and I have an A8L that have adaptive cruise control, meaning like if I set the speed limit at 75 and a car in front of me is not going 75, the monitors will detect that and it will slow my car down automatically. So even though my cruise is set at 75, it will reduce my speed and keep my distance. With this, like I'm set at 75 right now and it's letting me get awfully close to that Mercedes in front of me and I think it will yeah like I'm continuing I'm getting closer and closer and closer without it actually slowing me down and down there you'll see the collision alert yeah so I should not be this close to that Mercedes in front of me which is odd maybe there's something I'm missing here but in my other Audis my BMWs and even a Honda it doesn't allow me to get this close in my wife's Suburban even doesn't allow me to get this close to another car when I set the cruise control so am I missing something here but even if I am it's that simple in every other car I've ever driven and it's not happening in this car. I'm on a cooking date with my daughter and we've come across our first charging station, not Electrify America, and Electrify America is actually owned by Volkswagen because of Dieselgate, whole thing. They have to create infrastructure across the country. This is an EV charging only station. What's nice is they had an opening, so I'm gonna try for the first time to charge my car. Let's see what we're at for range right now. I'm gonna be in there for like an hour, hour and a half, and then we're gonna see what our range is when we're done and how much it actually costs us. All right, so we're at 134 miles of range right now. We're gonna charge it. I'm gonna find out how long we charge it for when we're done our date and then how far we got 129 miles and also how much it cost us so now also I want to look at what we're at for actual miles of the car 4,176 miles I bought so I put 76 miles on the car since I bought it I've gone way more than 76 miles in range like I've used more than 76 miles in range even though we've only gone 76 miles so here's our charge point we're gonna connect it to our CCS right here look at all the moist look at snow from yesterday I don't feel like that's safe all right we're gonna Charge, new to charge point, yes. All right, it looks like they charge 27 cents per kilowatt hour. Time rate's free. So is it actually free to charge right now? I see no light on, white lights on. Energy rate, price, am I charging right now? I don't actually even know. Yeah, I'm charging. Okay, so we're good. Or is that that one? Let's go see if we're charging. I don't, man, I'm embarrassed to even own an EV. I haven't checked my car. Yeah, we're not charging. I didn't get a walk through when I, I don't even know what I'm doing. Forget it. I need the charge point app to even do it. I, I don't have time to download an app. I thought I could just swipe my card. I don't know why I need an app to pay for, I'm like, I don't need a, an app to pay for gas. So every different brand I need to have an app for, charge point, electrify America, everywhere I gotta have an app for it. I can't just swipe a card and have it pay like I'm getting gas for a car. First, real complaint. So my Audi. It's been two hours on my lunch date with my munchkin. I was in a rush. So like I saw the charger after we had already parked. So I went in, we checked in, I went and got my car. I brought it to the charger, realized I need to set up an account, which I didn't have time for. And I also didn't even have time to move the car. So it's been sitting here, not charging for two hours. And also I took up a charging spot, which is like a real a-hole move. I shouldn't have done that either. And that's kind of the inconvenience of it. And now we're going to the mall, which where there is a charge across America and I have an account for. So you should be good to go. Hey, what's under the seat right there? What is that? I don't know. Open it up. I definitely didn't put that there. I think we might have got a prize when we bought the car. Okay, you got it. What is it? It says Merry Christmas on it right here. Yeah. Two Sky Love Natalie. Nice wrapping paper. It's so hard Classy. To open. Oh, it's a wine decanter. What's that? Cool. Mom is gonna love that. Don't tell her we found that because I just got a gift for mom. 
I'm gonna get brownie points for it. All right, let's go to the mall and charge this car. Okay. Okay, so luckily, I need to go buy a couple things at the mall. I'm gonna return a couple things at the mall. And at this mall, there is an Electrify America station, which I have an account for. My credit card is linked to it already from a year ago when I had a Porsche take on with the uh, television show that we did with my mom. We're gonna try the Electrify America station for the first time. Now, this car takes up to 350 kilowatts. This station only puts out up to 150 kilowatts, so it might be a little bit slower to charge. We're gonna find out. I don't know how much it's gonna cost me because when I had the Porsche, it was free charging. So we're gonna find out how much it's gonna cost to actually charge this car. Here we go right here, 150 kilowatt charger. All right, now like I said, they have a credit card reader. So you can just swipe your credit card, which is way easier than the charge, the other one, the charge points or whatever it's called. I can either swipe my credit card or I have it on my phone. I can just tap. Let's figure this out. I'm gonna pick the location I'm at. Two out of four are available. I'm gonna select number two. Yeah, we're gonna check the, the ID number, number two, yeah. So I'm gonna check that and then swipe to charge. So I don't even have to type my phone. Here we go, please plug in. Open up the car here. Oh, that's the slow charger. So we have a slow charger and a faster charger. You can see, I'm not a techie. I forget what they're actually called. You can see here how it flips down. Those can take faster charging. So I'm gonna take the charger here. You can see right there, that's a fast charger, the bottom. These cables don't twist very easily. All right, we're locked in place. Please plug in. Connecting the vehicle, initiating charge, and we're gonna wait for it to engage. Welcome, Craig. So I just got an alert on my phone. Continue. Let's wait for it to set up. I think I can hear it starting to engage. I haven't done this in so well over a year and a half. I forget how it's all done. It sounds like it's starting to engage. All right, here we go. So I'm at 51% charge right now. So I'm halfway through my mileage. So I'm at 51%, it will tell me when we're done and I can calculate how much it actually costs me. We're at 4,191 miles with 119 miles range. So I bought this car with 4,100 miles. So we've driven 91 miles and I have 119 miles left of range. I forget, forget what we were at for range when I bought the car. I don't really know. But we're at 50%, we're gonna go in the mall, come back out, and I'm paying roughly 30 cents per kilowatt. All right, you ready to go in? Mm -hmm. Now this is a 150 kilowatt charging station. You can see it's charging right now at 44, 45 kilowatts, which is actually pretty slow. The other thing too, it's 443 right now, so we'll see how long it actually takes to get to 100%. 40? 42. All right, it's five o'clock, so it's been like 20 minutes. We are at, I can check on my phone, we're at 69%, so I'm gonna keep walking. I'll keep walking around, keep killing time. All right, so we just got a notification. We are at 99%. Now it's charging at 13 kilowatts, where it was charging about 40 to 50 the whole time. So we're just about done, it's 5.30. So it was like 50 minutes it took to get to 99% from 50%. That's a lot of waiting time. Not to mention, we also just spent $100 in the mall while we were waiting. All right, let's see where we're at. You know, we already have a guy calling Electra High America because these things never work right. So a lot of times they'll give you like free charging if they have an error. Let's see, four minutes left until idle fees. So if I was here any longer, they'd start charging you for being late, which is actually a good thing. Keeps people from sitting around. So if we just end it, how do we end it? Let me see Maybe here. Unplugged. Let's try to push this button. Okay, we are unlocked. $17, it cost me $17 for half a tank of gas, basically, which really isn't that great, because a full tank on a sedan like this probably would have been $50, $40. So $18.23 for half a tank of charge. Double that for a full tank would be what? $36 would, well, tank a premium for this car. Like if this was like an A6 or something, would probably be close to 60 so i saved like 20 bucks to have an electric vehicle that's not that great not to mention it took me a half an hour so it cost me 18 dollars and 23 cents for 50 percent charge now let's say i was at zero to 100 so i'll double it so it cost me 36 dollars for a full charge from zero to 100 i go about it says 300 but it's more like 260 ish so if this was an a6 let's say like a gasoline engine car it probably would have been 60 to charge this would have cost me just under 40 and i'm getting less range and I had to wait a half an hour, 40, what was it, 50 minutes, Kendall? Yeah. Took us about 50 minutes, and I also spent an extra $100 in the mall just because I had time to kill. So technically this cost me $118 for an hour's worth of my time to charge this car. All the while, this guy out here is on the phone with Electrify America because there's a charging error on his charger. And just like that, on 100% range, just went from 238 to 237, and the charger's still behind me. So they did actually give me this car on full charge, and it brought it down from z from 100% to 50% in just 91 miles. So 91 miles, 50% charge. That's like 180 mile range when this car is supposed to get, I think near 300. So the estimated range on this car is 238 miles. I am still in the mall. Like I literally just left the mall parking lot. I'm at 227 miles 
already. I was at 100% when I left the mall less than 60 seconds ago. I've gone 11 miles of range to leave the parking lot, which is just silly. Now I bought this car on a full charge, 240 miles when I bought it. I went 91 miles and that brought it down to 50% range. So 91 miles, 50%, double it, 180 mile range on an electric vehicle. And it cost me $18 to charge it halfway. So if I do the math, it cost me about $36 for a full charge, which gets me about 180 miles. Now do that math, 180 miles divided by $36 is roughly costing me about 20 cents per mile. Now I wanna compare the cost to my wife's Suburban. She has a GMC Yukon, it has a 420 mile range, so double the range. It gets roughly 16 miles to the gallon and it has a 28 gallon tank. Now if my wife is getting 16 miles to the gallon in her Suburban and the average cost of gas is $3 per gallon, it's costing us roughly 18 cents per mile to drive her Suburban, if my math is right. So this car costs more than her Suburban would per mile, I think. Good morning and welcome to the next day of our EV adventure. What I'm curious to find out is it's winter. There's tons and tons of snow. Does This car doesn't need to warm up. So do we just have heat like right away? Let's see if the car just blows heat right away. It's electronic like your house, right? So how do I turn the AC off? We'll just AC off. I don't want AC. I want... No, no, no. I just want the fan to go up. I do not have my Audi Connect app hooked up to my phone yet because I couldn't find the code over the weekend. I have to call Audi and they're closed on the weekends. So I couldn't use the remote starter. Now Europe has very strict EPA laws. So there's no such thing as remote starts on like BMWs and Audis. So I can't get remote starter on my S6. This is electric though. So can I like from my app, warm the car up and turn the defroster on? I assume I could. The answer is yes. It's hot right away. Chase, is yours hot back there? Yeah. Right away, instant heat. But I couldn't turn the defroster on, so if it was really cold, my windshield would have been ice still. I'm going to start keeping a log of the miles because I forget where I was just probably a minute ago in this video, but last night when I was at 240 miles of range, full charge, I drove from the mall to my house, which is seven miles, from my house to the gym, which is three miles. So a total of 10 miles since I last charged my car to a full charge. I'm now at 204 miles of range. So I've driven 10, but used 35 miles of range and I haven't been driving hard. Like when I first got this car, I was driving hard on it. Now I'm not, I'm in efficiency mode. I'm not in dynamic mode. So I'm not driving sporty. I'm not driving with a heavy foot. And I have now used 36 miles of range in 10 miles. Now I'm not full of complaints on this car and I'm getting used to it. And there is a learning curve and I knew that going into electric cars. But what I do love is that you'll notice how fast I just got in and went. I didn't have to put my key in. I didn't have to start my car. You just get in, put it in drive and go pretty much. I have to hit the start button and then put it in drive and go, but they're right next to each other. So it's really quick. And when my complaint before was there's a delay opening the door, opposite is how efficient it is just getting in it and driving away. Now my car had $103,000 MSRP. That is a crazy amount of money. It's like ludicrous money for a car because it's electric. Is that why? Because I am in an Audi Q7 non-e-tron, which is like half the MSRP of my e-tron GT. And I'm looking at the center console and the features. Now this is a 2021, so it's a year older. Has full, it is far nicer than my e-tron GT. You can see everything is touchscreen here versus mine is just a couple knobs and buttons. It just seems like the finish is a little bit nicer than my $100,000 car. So I'm thinking like I have the base model, which is insane that at 103,000, I'm getting a base model vehicle. That is just insane. Now I feel like I'm missing out on things like all of this. And my S6 does that when you open the door. My e-tron GT does not. Next day, it is 8.01. I want to see, I just got in this car. I want to see how fast it turns to heat. Like how hot, how quickly is the car going to warm up and blow hot air? The other thing is I was at 190 miles of range yesterday. I drove my son to soccer. I drove to work. I drove home and I picked my son up from soccer. I used 41 miles in what was probably less than 15 miles. Maybe it was 20 miles and it was really cold. So it's 30 degrees today. It was 30 degrees yesterday. I'm definitely seeing the range range go down quicker in the cold. And honestly, I would rather just not have this. That is fine. Like if you look right here, 
I have three quarters of a tank of electricity, let's call it. So I'm just under three quarters. But when I see this and the range going down rapidly, it gives me serious anxiety and it's called range anxiety is a real thing. I don't need to see 149 miles because it's a made up number anyway. It's not really 149 miles, which is stressful. It's probably more like 120 miles according to that. But when you look at here, hey, I still have three quarters of a tank. No stress. Okay, let's see if it'll blow hot air. 802. So it literally took one minute for everything to warm up and it's blowing hot air out the vents already, which is pretty impressive. I did kind of find another problem, which could be a pretty significant problem. So I'm on the way to the gym. I have like my pre-workout that I'm drinking in my cup right here. And you know, I'm in a car, so it moves back and forth and water kind of spilled out right here, which is my fault. But what is a big deal is that water this is your volume button for your radio, your power button, everything. I definitely don't want water falling into this spot. And it almost seems like, I mean, stuff spills. My wife spills coffee in every car she's ever owned constantly. This, you know, like what am I not supposed to drink out of a cup in my car? I always have to have a lid. And even if so, I guess it's probably just inevitable that something is gonna get in there, which is a little scary because it's an electronic, pretty significant electronic button. All right, this might be a mistake, but the first car you're ever gonna drive not in a parking lot is a $103,000 car. Hop in. Did you just say not in a parking lot? This isn't gonna go off. Look at it, it starts automatically. What the heck? Didn't even have to push a button. How cool is that? Start Adjust your seat. I'm not driving this whole thing. Raise it too. I'm doing. I don't know if this is a, probably a mistake. Okay. Maybe we should start with a Camry or something. No, this isn't. Can you see over the steering wheel? Yeah. Lift the seat up. I can't see the pedals. That's brake. No, that's gas. Can okay. you see over the steering wheel? Yeah. All right, put your foot on the brake. Put it in drive. Pull that back. Light on the gas, because it is fast. Show me the brake. Light on the gas, light on the brake. He moves all my cars at my shop. He can even parallel park before everybody judges him. Seatbelt tightened. I think it knows you're 12. Probably. This car's definitely smart enough to. Watch your side. It's getting close. No, you weren't. Good job avoiding potholes. Go that way. A what? Oh, you want me to drive? Oh. Go around the building again. This is the most stressed I've like ever been. You should be. I'm used to driving convertible Escalades. <laughs> That's true. I forgot you drove that one. Is that the first car you ever drove? Yeah, I bet. Go down. Good job avoiding the pothole. This is my first car. Take a right after a full complete stop up here. Once you're straight, give it just a little bit of gas. And I give it more gas. Go. Go. All right, break. That was a lot. <laughs> that made me nervous. Can we keep going? Yeah, go to the cul-de-sac. Good job with it. You, you're single footing, right? Yeah. Good job. Is this real wheel drive or all wheel drive? All wheel. Turn around up here. This should be its own YouTube video. 12 year old drives $100,000 car. All right, go ahead a little bit. Straight. All right, stop at the stop sign. What? You can stop right here. We're gonna park. Pete, good job. Done. Now I'm gonna drive. Done. Good job. Say that again. That was fun. It's like a more advanced go kart.